Welcome back to Polar Warriors. If this is your first time here, my growing channel is completely dedicated to bipolar disorder and you'll find an unbelievable amount of helpful information here. A very special thanks to my partner, the International Bipolar Foundation, for helping my videos reach a much larger audience. Today, I want to go through a summarized rundown of the different types of bipolar disorder in a single video. This is for the convenience of those looking for information on the differences between the various types. If you are new to this or would like a much more in-depth explanation, check out my series called Faces of Bipolar Disorder. I have a separate dedicated video for each of the different types as well as major symptoms there. All right, so let's jump right into it. Uh, here's something really important that not everybody knows. Although depression is one of the most notable symptoms of bipolar disorder, it's actually based on the way we ex experience the manic symptoms of bipolar disorder that determines a specific type or a diagnosis. That's right, the diagnosis and all of the types come down to the mania, not so much the depression. Many people who experience hypomania or the feel-good highs associated with some types of bipolar usually don't mention it to their doctors. They're either new to this and never realize that it's actually part of the illness, or they don't see it as a problem that needs mentioning, even though it usually results in a depressive fallout after the quote, fun feelings go away. This causes so many people to get misdiagnosed and not receive the treatment that they need to feel better. That being said, if you go to the doctor and you say, hey doc, I'm depressed and I think I have bipolar disorder, you're probably gonna go out the door with a pocket full of antidepressants and nothing more. If you do have bipolar disorder and you just take an antidepressant alone, it can literally add rocket fuel to the other symptoms. So it's really important to learn more about the illness and how you personally experience it. I have a video that talks about the top 10 signs of bipolar disorder, which is a really good place to start. So bipolar type one, this is the category that I fall under and those of us who have type one will experience what's known as mania or full-blown mania. Now this goes far beyond that feel-good hypomania that I briefly mentioned earlier. Full-blown mania can include things like extreme agitation, uh, grandiose thoughts or beliefs, um, all the way up to total psychosis and delusions, which is basically the end of the road for us. Even a single full-blown manic episode during your lifetime that lasts at least a week can equate to a bipolar one diagnosis, regardless of your experience or history with depression. Please know that there's always exceptions and we all experience symptoms in different ways. Full-blown mania can also be the result of certain medication side effects, certain types of drug or substance abuse, and other factors in people's lives. So it's common for good doctors to take their time getting to know you before they just hand out a diagnosis. Many people end up with a type one bipolar diagnosis after being hospitalized, arrested, or family members insisting that they finally get help. It's a really tough one because a lot of us don't see the symptoms ourselves, even though they're really obvious to everyone around us. This is really normal and unfortunately part of the illness, basically not being able to see that we're ill. I have an entire video also dedicated to mania if you'd like to learn more about all the different types. Now for bipolar type two. This is where hypomania does come into play. People who have type two will experience at least one major depressive episode in conjunction with at least one hypomanic episode. Now, this is a really tough one to diagnose because doctors have a hard time distinguishing the difference between major depressive disorders and actual bipolar disorder. So many people fail to mention or even realize that they experience hypomania. When you have so much energy, you almost feel high, uh, your self-esteem or sense of creativity and confidence go through the roof, and you feel like a social butterfly or a knight in shining armor, who would think that there's a problem with that, right? If a doctor is asking about past history, of course we'd remember being arrested or hospitalized, but most people won't remember that crazy fun month of feeling on top of the world that happened six months ago or so. Type two bipolar can be 
very elusive and unfortunately the periods of horrible debilitating depression tend to last a very long time with this type. I'm talking about months or even years for some people. When they finally get to a hypomanic state again, a lot of people think that the depression went away or that they've been quote cured until the nasty cycle just starts all over again. So now for the third type of bipolar, which is known as cyclothymia or cyclothymic disorder. This is often called bipolar's little cousin, and although it's a milder form of bipolar disorder, mild does not mean simple or easy. Cyclothymia involves feelings of nagging depression, but not usually severe enough to where it becomes debilitating. Um, it involves periods of mania, but not quite as intense as hypomania or full-blown mania. Now, these symptoms can last for long periods of time. Uh, diagnostic criteria for cyclothymia usually requires that people cycle frequently over a span of at least two years. Cyclothymic patients will also not stay euthemic or stable for more than two months at a time before experiencing another depressive or manic episode again. Now, there's a big difference between the normal moodiness that we all experience as just part of being a human being and an actual illness that affects our ability to work, our relationships, school, or our personal lives in a very, very negative way. It's also really important to know that bipolar disorder is a progressive illness, which means it can get worse or progress to a different type if it isn't treated. Now, moving on to the fourth type, and this would be those given a diagnosis of bipolar disorder not otherwise specified or NOS. Um, this is also sometimes called other specified bipolar. Many doctors who are aware that there is a serious mood disorder, but they're still trying to narrow down a specific diagnosis, will use this as a kind of stopgap, basically, while they're observing our symptoms. I know this can be really frustrating for some people who are looking for answers, and this doesn't mean that the doctor doesn't know what they're doing. Um, at least it's a starting point and a way that people can begin receiving treatment that might help them start to feel better. And like I've mentioned before, it can take time for a doctor to get to know you and to make an accurate diagnosis. It is so important to not rush this process out of frustration. If you are diagnosed with bipolar NOS, it's even more crucial to maintain constant appointments or contact with your doctor so that they can achieve the accurate diagnosis and then move on to the best possible treatment approach. So the next four types I'm gonna talk about are what are known as course specifiers, which aren't specifically types per se, but they're very commonly attached or added to a bipolar diagnosis. I get asked a lot about these course specifiers, so it'll be really good to cover these in the video as well. The first one is extremely common, and it was added to my own personal diagnosis. This is what is known as rapid cycling bipolar disorder. I also have an entire video dedicated to this, but to summarize, it basically describes people who cycle faster or more often between the whole gamut of bipolar symptoms. This could include cycling between mania, depression, agitation, or mixed states with, which within a much shorter period of time than typical bipolar individuals do. Patients who rapid cycle must experience four or more separate mood episodes within a single year to be diagnosed with this course specifier. Now, of course, a lot of us, and myself included, cycle a lot more often than just a few times a year, but that just goes to clarify what the diagnostic criteria is for rapid cycling. It's basically like rapid relapsing, where we start to come out of one episode and then quickly go into another. It can be really confusing for those around us to watch us switch mood polarity so quickly. They can see us go from super excited and wanting to take over the world to laying in bed crying and isolating ourselves in a very short period of time. So moving on to the second specifier, and this is what is known as bipolar with psychotic features. 
Now this is a nasty one for us, and it can occur during both a manic or a depressive episode. This is basically where we can lose touch with reality, and it causes a lot of us to end up in the hospital or even jail. Psychosis is usually associated with type 1 bipolar, where we go far beyond full-blown mania and basically lose ourselves in the illness. It can include delusions, like believing things that are obviously not true, um, extreme paranoia, like thinking we're being monitored by the government or other people, uh, believing that we're some kind of celebrity or religious figure, or thinking that we're on some special mission to save the world, or that God has chosen us to do something grandiose. Uh, but wait, there's more. It can actually progress to severe symptoms like hallucinations, hearing voices. Um, so this is one of the most serious aspects of the illness. For some of us, symptoms like depression can get so bad to where it causes us to become literally catatonic, where we can't move or talk. It's horrible, to say the least. So if you aren't familiar with bipolar disorder, this symptom is probably what the media and other people have stigmatized or blown so far out of proportion. Yes, these are very serious symptoms, but it's a very small number of people who experience them and it doesn't happen all the time. So the next time you hear the word bipolar, it would be irresponsible to think of someone who's just psychotic all the time. That is only a rare part of the illness, which is only a coarse specifier and not even a specific type of bipolar. Moving on to the third specifier, and that would be bipolar disorder with mixed features. It basically is used to describe those of us who experience mixed episodes often enough to where it's added to our diagnosis as a course specifier. This is where we could be extremely depressed and manic at the same time. Uh, mixed states are horrible for me personally because I feel so depressed where I almost can't even get out of bed, but I'm crawling out of my skin with anxiety or mania at the same time. Some people also refer to this as mixed mania or mixed states or even dysphoric mania, which is where we can be depressed but extremely agitated or angry at the same time. We've made it to the last one, and if you're still watching the video, thank you so much for taking the time to learn more about bipolar disorder. It really does mean a lot to people like me. The last one would be bipolar disorder with anxious distress. And this is more of a rare specifier. I actually only heard of this one myself recently. So many of us who have bipolar will experience things like panic attacks or severe anxiety. If this happens often enough to where it becomes a dominating part of our bipolar experience, instead of meeting the full criteria for panic or generalized anxiety disorders, psychologists will use this as a course specifier to make sure it's at least noted that we go through things like this regularly. Now, I've tried my best here to keep all of these really shortened to the point so people who would like to get an overview of the different types can at least get enough basic information to have a better understanding of bipolar disorder. Everything I mentioned is just a micro fraction to the whole scope of bipolar disorder. If you want to learn a lot more about it, that's exactly what my channel is all about. Now, before the comments start flying, there's a couple of things I'd like to mention. If you think that you might have bipolar disorder, I would suggest watching my video that talks about the 10 signs of bipolar disorder. It's currently the most viewed video on my channel. Go through that video and write down all of the symptoms that you experience, uh, how strong they get on a scale of one to 10, and how often they happen. Take that list to a doctor and it could be extremely valuable in preventing a possible misdiagnosis, which happens all the time. This is also gonna help ensure that you get the care that you deserve, so you don't have to keep feeling like this all the time. If you're tempted to leave some kind of comment like bipolar disorder is just some word that psychologists came up with or major pharmacy, you know, you're right. They came up with the word and different types so that those of us who suffer like this can have common ground to share information and discuss treatments that work so we can live a better life. Bipolar is not an identity, but just a word that describes a group of symptoms that a large majority of the population experience. Just like diabetes or allergies or any other word that doctors came up with at some point in history. 
There's also a huge difference between the normal ups and downs of moods that we all experience as human beings versus an actual mental illness that causes extremely disruptive behavior and impairs our ability to function in the most basic ways. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and visiting my channel and especially for taking the time to learn more about bipolar disorder with me. If you have any questions about bipolar and would like to contact me directly, there's a link at the top of all my videos where you can become a Polar Warrior patron. I do my best to respond to as many comments as I can on YouTube, but if you'd like a guaranteed way to have your own bipolar coach, so to speak, then going to Patreon is the way to do it. You'll not only be supporting my ability to help others, but you'll also have access to a lot of videos that aren't on YouTube. Anyways, feel free to stop by my channel again because I'll have lots more videos to come. Take good care of yourself, and hopefully we'll see you here again soon. Stay well.